Welcome back to the world's worst fishing everybody. I'm Chris Jones and in this video we're gonna kind of do a little how-to crafting tutorial. Uh, we will make some baits towards the end of the video but we're gonna be showing you how you can make your own divider cup. See look at it. Ooh ah right yeah. So the divider cup is a neat tool a must-have if you're a hand pour guy or gal and for the longest time, they've been sold exclusively through Stankex Baits, which is uh, Travis Crossman's um, company. And uh, for those who may be new to bait making, Travis Crossman is also uh, one of the owners of Dead On Plastics, you know, the actual plastisol that we use here on the World's Worst Fishing. So the divider cup has been sold um, through Stankex Baits for a long time. But like a lot of supply chains due to the uh, coronavirus, the supply chain of these Pyrex cups has kind of gotten disrupted. And I can personally attest to that. I have gone to every little store in my town, including all the big box stores, Target, Walmart, all of that, looking for Pyrex brand cups. They're all sold out and they haven't gotten any in in the last month. So there's definitely a shortage of those. But we're going to make a divider cup with some of our off-brand cups, okay? So, um, for example, I use mainly these Anchor off-brand cups here. Yeah, it's, well, you can, you can kind of see it. To me, they're not as nice as the real Pyrex cups. They don't pour quite as well. With that said, that's what we have available. And uh, this is a smaller size. So if we just look at Travis's... Uh, divider cup here. This one's a little bit smaller. Okay, you can definitely see the diameter's a lot smaller. So we're going to be making a petite uh, divider cup using a cup this size, um, which I think the size that that Stanks was doing all along is probably the perfect size. Um, but I can't get one of those, and I figure, hey, you know, a little a little small one might not be a bad thing. Um, for pouring, you know, just a little bit at a time. Um, so I'm actually really excited. I'm going to put links down in the description to all of the materials that you need. Basically just a sheet of silicone and then some silicone uh, adhesive uh, is, is what I gathered. This stuff right here. Yeah. There you go. So anyway, with that said, we're going to uh, start the show and... Uh, yeah, hopefully uh, you will find this useful. A lot of people have been asking about the divider cup and here's how you make one. Okay, so before I start, I gotta give a shout out to Two Fresh Fishing. Um, he's another YouTuber who makes baits and uh, he actually did a divider cup video about two weeks ago. Um, so he got the supplies. Um, I'm probably pretty sure from the same, um, from the same exact, I didn't actually mean to click on it there. I don't want to use his content but um yeah so i'm pretty sure he's using some of the same stuff here i did watch his video but it was about two weeks ago so uh here's another great video that you can also check out um just for a little bit more perspective on how to do this all right so yeah definitely check out uh two fresh fishing uh video on the divider cup like i mentioned so first order of business um and travis was actually nice enough to kind of tell us all how to do these um, ever since the Pyrex cups have been hard to find. So the first order of business is to take the cup that you're going to use and melt down a bunch of plastic into it all the way to the top because that's going to be our template that we can then later trace out on our big uh, silicone sheet there. So I'm going to cook this up and uh, I'll actually, it'll be a while before I can come back because I have to cook this up fully and then let it set fully. And anyone who's ever done that knows that it takes a cup a while to set back up so anyway i will meet you back when this hodgepodge of remelt is done and then we'll show you what to do from there okay here's our puck <laughs> as you can see the bottom uh a little little crazy there but now we're just going to basically cut it in half uh the best that we can and hopefully this works Come on. Boy, this is, this is very strange. That's not cutting worth a crap. Hmm. 
like, what the heck? I should be able to just cut it in half. Yeah. Like, cut in half, you stupid thing. Yeah. There we go. That's not exactly, uh, I guess it didn't finish uh, melting all the way. Nonetheless, we still have a template because the outside edges are what really matters here. And if we look closely, those are still a good shape. So we're actually gonna put it close to the edge, okay? That way we're not like doing it out here randomly. All right. So now what we're gonna do is take a Sharpie pen. Yeah, there we go. And we're just going to trace. Try to trace carefully. All right. And I'll bring, you know what, let me change the camera angle. Okay, now for this other side here. So there's kind of what we have for our trace. Okay, so we actually have the edge of a mold here. And we're just gonna trace across the top there. Okay. And there you go. We essentially have our template. And now we're just gonna cut it out with some scissors. Okay, so here we go. We'll kind of get started at the bottom there. And we'll just kind of cut along this this edge. Beautiful. Alrighty. Basic scissor skills that we all learned in uh, elementary school apply here. So. Alrighty. Try and zoom in a bit. Of course, I was never all that good at the art and craft stuff growing up, which is why I'm still amazed that I even got, got into this bait making stuff. I had no art skills growing up, only music skills. My sister got all the art skills. And uh, the day that she takes up bait making, we're all finished. Believe me. Nobody will ever like what any of us do again. It will pale in comparison. Okay. So essentially, minus maybe a little bit of trimming. Yeah, we might need to trim up a little bit towards the top. But look at that. That's the start of our divider cup. So... Let's see, yeah, it goes almost all the way to the bottom, so I might have to trim up, trim things up just a smidge. You know, I don't, I don't want it too tight because then it'll bend, you know. So that's, uh, that's basically where we're at, and really it's that simple to kind of get it started. I mean, essentially this cup is built. All I need to do now is just glue it in. Okay, so I did a little bit of trimming. If you look at the side of one of these cups, it kind of has this sort of angular effect to it, right? So I kind of trimmed this on the top to go with it. If you look at the Pyrex cup, it's fairly flat. So it just, it, it looks a little cleaner, but I kind of trimmed this in line and uh, I think we're good to go. So the next step is to take this out. We're going to cover all the sides, okay? With our adhesive here, so High temp, resistant, RTV, silicone. Uh, let's see, yeah, there it is. A sealant adhesive, there we go. So, yeah, that's pretty much the next step. So we're gonna go ahead and do that now. But first, we're gonna take a few swigs of our Polliner Oktoberfest. German beer at its finest. Yes, sir, Prost. All right, so, let me, uh, figure out how I'm gonna do this here. Well, 
anyway just gonna draw a line with this stuff and uh, well we should probably do a little bit more than that what do y'all think anyway that is the idea okay and we're gonna do that pretty much the entire length of it all right oops got some on the outside of the cup there not too much so that's basically a good starting point um, so I'm, I'm really gonna goop this stuff on though I want a lot of it that way we get a really good seal but basically you just cover that and then boop plop it down in the cup and then you can actually run some more around it and smooth it out with your fingers that's what Terrence did on his video to fresh fishing so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna apply even more of this and then I'll meet you right back and uh, then we'll go ahead and set it in the cup and that's pretty much it you know wait 24 hours and then you have a working divider cup all right so here we go <laughs> bug in the face gonna try to get it in there right okay nice and straight okay yeah that's nice and straight and uh, one thing I think to watch out for is if your silicone piece is a little too big and you have to force it into the cup then it's it's gonna warp and it's not gonna stay in place so if you have to force it in there just given the properties of the silicone it's gonna move around and it's not gonna set right in place like you want it to and um, basically the next step is to then and it's gonna be hard to film that um, I can try to get an angle on it but the next step is then to add even more of this stuff around the edges and really put it in there if you look at the one from Stanks he's lined the outside of each side as well and smoothed it over with something either his finger or something else so that's what we're gonna attempt to do next okay there we go I'm probably gonna clean it up a little bit more but most importantly it is in place and there's tons of the adhesive um, all around it and um, on, on the edges to keep this thing in place where we want it so 24 hours from now this will now be our new divider cup and now that I'm really looking at it and seeing the volume of each side I don't think this is a bad size I think you can pour a lot with this um, so I'm actually really excited to see that uh, well to see it in action so there it is right there with the stanks you can see the, the difference in somebody who's made probably a thousand of these just how clean it is versus somebody who's made one <laughs> okay everybody welcome back it is the next day it's a new day and here is our divider cup and she is nice and set nice and strong everything is um, is well cured so you can see I didn't clean it up a whole lot more I thought about it and then I moved on with my life so I'm excited to pour with this so what we're gonna do is we're going to um, obviously mix out some plastic here now you can always just put your raw plastic in the divider cup and just stick the whole thing in the microwave and cook it there I just my old habit is to prepare my plastic in two separate cups um, you just you have a little bit more room to see what you're doing and there's just more room to mix um, and then I pour them into the divider cup so um, you can do it either way I you know I just trying to mix mix things up in there and measure them out I just I'm more comfortable doing it that way okay so we have our dead-on plastic black bucket worm blend Okay, so this is the sinking stuff, and <coughs> we're going to do a <coughs> um, little bit different of a divider cup color than you've probably seen me do before. We're going to take some of this MF glitter, and this is the tiny stuff, folks, 0 .004. All right, this stuff is quite literally like powder. It's, it's literally like your mica powders, what we call micro flakes. And we're really going to put a bunch in there. All right. So one side is going to be very blue. 
and the micro flakes almost are, are like a color base. They're so fine, it just colors the, the plastic. Um, so instead of it being clear plastic with flake in it, it's literally just gonna look blue sparkly. <laughs> then the other side, we're gonna mix gold mica powder. Okay, so some gold pearl over there on that side. And we're gonna mix it with another MF product. Eh. Dark watermelon, okay? One of my favorite colors in the world. All right, so we're gonna throw some of that in there. And that just, that kind of just makes a really pretty shade of gold, essentially. Um, the, the watermelon pigment really only serves just to darken up the color of the gold pigment. So you can see the outside, that's what the gold looks like by itself. And then we're stirring in the dark, darker pigment. And there you go. So that's a real kind of dark, richer shade of gold. All right, y'all, we got a smoking hot world's worst fishing divider cup. Let's go. Let's see what we can do. Well, didn't get a whole lot of blue on that one there, but that's okay. Boy, I got those real hot. Look at how sloppy this pour is, you guys. Ugh. Do a better job than this at home, please. Man. This thing's pouring like a butte. All right, you guys, it works. You can see the two streams beautifully flowing together in the center to create harmony in the mold. Really is lovely to watch. Oh, yeah. And this is going to be a really cool color, I think. Yeah, just blending a couple of... Uh, Basic colors together, right? Blue and watermelon and gold, essentially. That's some pretty basic stuff. All right, so we've already taken a few of these bad boys out, but we'll uh, yank one out here just to uh, show a little reveal action. Yeah, look at that. Real pretty color, and the small blue flake is uh, is really, really something. Yeah, so not too bad. They need a little bit of trimming, of course. So, you know, you can just kind of pull them off the sides. I kind of ran through some of this in my last video on this mold. Uh, you can just kind of clean them up real quick with your fingers. That's less work that you have to do with the scissors. All right, well, there are the uh, next round of pours. So in the meantime, I'm going to uh, think of what we're gonna do next. I think I have an idea for something cool. Um, so stay tuned. All right, everybody. So we have some purple and some black and you'll see I have injection molds. The divider cup is not just an open hand pour mold tool. You can actually use it in an injection setting to get those crazy swirls. And like we've done in our more recent video, you can actually hand pour a lot of injection style molds, um, with a solid color or divider cup and have great results. However, a mold like this, the Angling AI Stinger, it has, you know, a lot of little extremities. It's a creature bait. There's a lot of thin portions that you just simply have to inject. So, if we want to get some of that divider cup craziness, we literally just pour it into a single injector. And be very careful when you do this. M make sure you have both gloves on. Okay? Be very, very, very careful. But we're basically just going to divider cup the injector, essentially and then inject the mold. It's that simple, okay? So now we're going to throw the top on and boom! Let's bring this over, nice and slow. Hold a wee bit of pressure. Next mold. I hope I have enough contrast here. I mixed the color up pretty quickly. But in our last video, where we uh, did a video kind of dedicated to those two uh, silicone worm molds that we poured earlier, I did a, a color very similar to this, a black and uh, purple, um, but I wanted to see what it would kind of look like. Yeah, that's looking really pretty there on the table. I wanted to see what it would look like um, in an injection mold, particularly this bait. So uh, hopefully these turned out well. If not, I might try it again. All right, here we go. I got fussed at for not doing a drum roll in my last video. So here we go, say it with me everybody. Drum roll please.
All right, let's see how we did. Oh yeah. Ugh, come on, come on, get out of there. All right. Yeah, look at that. It's kind of little purple and black swirlies. And they're not necessarily swirled. It gives you more of a random pattern. You can see this one got almost all black colorant. Some pearl there in the back. Yeah, this one right here looks pretty cool. So that right there is kind of how the angling AIC block would make it look. But if you don't have one of those and you want to get this kind of random camouflage a little bit here and there pattern um, in a single injector, that's a good way to do it. You know, could just pour them, pour them in there at once and la da da. So let's, uh, let's look at this next mold just real fast. Let's see how these did. Yeah, real similar. Looks like one always wants to get more black in it than the other ones. Yeah, super cool. See some of the contrast up front there. Yeah. So anyway, yeah, divider cup can be used for, uh, for a lot of things. Okay, there we go, everybody. So here's what we made with our handy world's worst fishing divider cup. So yeah, I mean, that's, that's pretty much it, you guys. There's nothing to it. Um, you know, that was my first time ever doing it and we got a working divider cup out of it. It's not real pretty inside the cup, but it's what you pour that counts, right? So I'm sure I'll get better at it and I'm sure I'll make plenty more of these. You know, that uh, just that one sheet of silicone, I could probably do four, it, at least three of those. So um, again, link in the description to uh, the materials that you need. And uh, yeah, you can pour cool things like that right off the bat with your divider cup so if you've always wanted one but didn't get one and now can't find them for sale it's a fun easy thing to make yourself and i think you will really really enjoy using them it's a very inspiring tool it makes you think outside the box much like the c block from angling ai um, except more in a hand pour setting so anyway there's two completely different ways to use a divider cup and uh, as you can see, you can make your own and get the results that you want. Okay, guys. Well, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed. I hope you've learned. And um, hey, I hope to see a lot more divider cups out there. Uh, that's all I can say. So um, as always, shoot me a comment down below. Let me know what you think of my divider cup. If I did a great job, poor job, doesn't really matter, I guess, because it works. But uh, more importantly, um, Tell me which ones you liked. Did you like the kind of gold and blue worms or did you like the uh, injected, although we used the divider cup, uh, black and purple stingers. So both really cool, happy with the way they turned out. And uh, you know, what's cool, about, what's cool about the stingers is the black, whenever it um, sort of mixed in with that purple, it kind of darkened up the purple side some. So I thought that was really a really cool effect and um, that's something that you should always kind of count on whenever you're blending things with black is that it's going to darken it up much like mixing in black flake or something like that it will kind of alter the color for uh, spectrum a little bit so anyway we're out of here guys thank you so much for watching the world's worst fishing and we'll catch you next time